In this video, I'll go over how to properly import and clean up an image in Design Space like a flat file such as a JPEG, PNG, GIF, or BMP file. Now, these are not to be confused with SVG files, which are scalable vector files. If you don't understand the difference between uh, SVGs and flat files, I'll put a link on the screen below so you can click on it and watch another video where I explain the difference between the two. There are two important factors to understand about flat file images, and one is the dots per inch or DPI, and that is the resolution in a one inch area. So if you were to have a stretch, maybe just a single line of dots in one inch, uh, this is examples of how it might display and appear differently. So the one on the left is 10 dots per inch, and you see how it is, and this is greatly exaggerated and zoomed in, just so you can have a visual of the difference. Uh, you see how we have different shades of gray, it's really blocky and square around the edges. And so that's not a very clear image. Now, 72 dots per inch is a little bit better, a little bit sharp around the edges, but it's still a little fuzzy and blocky. And typically, most images that you see on the Internet, on websites, are 72 or 96 DPI. So if you download one of those images, let's say if you're on CNN.com or FoxNews.com or something like that, and you see an image that's a picture of the president that's really clear and uh, focused on your display and you download it and try to print it, it will look fuzzy if you try to make it a little larger. And that is because of the dots per inch. When you expand it, you are spreading those dots out. And over here we have a 300 dot per inch and you see a much sharper, cleaner edge around the uh, image and uh, typically print quality images are 300 to 600 dpi or larger. Now the other thing to understand about image resolution is the width and height image size. So if I were to go to Google Images and search on a Hello Kitty image and when you put your mouse over the image you'll see in the bottom left hand corner what the resolution is. So for example this one is a 2000 by 1424 uh, pixel image so this is a very large image probably larger than most monitors would display at 100% zoom. Now the one to the left of it is a 269 by 281 image and uh, that's going to be a lot smaller so we'll click on this one and I'll show it to you at 100% zoom and then we'll go back to the one to the right of it, and I'll show you that one at 100% zoom. So you can see there is a quite a bit of size difference in the two images. And that is going to affect the quality of the outputted print job. Now on my desktop, I've downloaded two images of Hello Kitty that are the exact same image. Only one is a much higher resolution than the other. And if I right click on the files and go to properties, I can compare and see the differences. On the general tab, I can see the file sizes. This one, the low resolution image is 28 kilobytes, and the higher resolution image is 123 kilobytes. And if I look at the details tabs, I can see the difference in the resolution of the images. And one is 1500 by 1500 pixels at 7200 dpi, and the other one is 150 by 150 at 72 dpi. Now, earlier I mentioned the print quality being 300 to 600 dpi or higher, but it depends on what you're doing and how you make your adjustments as well. So for example, this one, which is 1500 by 1500 at 72 dpi, when I shrink that image down and print, um, you know, a, an image that's only two or three, four inches wide, it condenses all of those pixels down to a much higher dots per inch ratio. And so now we'll import the images into Design Space, and I'll show you how to properly clean them up and what, are you, what you're going to want to look for. So first we'll import the lower resolution image, and on both of these images I'm going to choose complex image just so I can show you the level of uh, the shading and different things like that that you're, you might run into, and uh, this choosing a simple image may clean up some of that for you and prevent a lot of those issues but in this case I'm going to choose complex image and as you can see this image is fairly small so when I zoom in 
because of the low resolution of this image, you'll start to see that it gets fuzzy, and around the edges there is some gray and some different settings here. And there are two options over here you want to pay attention to when cleaning up a lower resolution image. One is the reduced colors, the second one is the color tolerance. I rarely mess with the reduced colors. What this does is it changes the number of colors that you're working with. So if I were to set this to uh, seven colors, you'll see that the image changes quite a bit, but I also get a lot rougher edges around through here. So if I do a print and cut on this, it's probably not going to look very well. But what it does is it reduces the number of colors and the shading around the edges of the image as well. I'm going to set this back to unmodified for now. And one of the setting, the probably more popular setting that you should pay attention to is the color tolerance. So if you think of this as the number of shades. So if I zoom in really close on this image and you see where I have a solid white background and as it gets into the black border before it gets between white and black you see that there are a lot of shades of gray in here and this is the depth at which it's going to remove the background into that shaded area. So if I increase this to about 30 on an image that has a good solid uh, separation when I use my magic wand it will give you a much cleaner image and this can also prevent a lot of little stray pixels and cuts being stranded out here around the image which can cause problems when you import the image or when you do a print and cut or if you try to cut the image because you could potentially end up with hundreds or even thousands of little tiny cuts and that can result in flash plug-in timeout errors as well. Now on a preview screen you see we have a nice clean little image with a single red cut line around that image. So you want to watch for any stray red cuts around your image that aren't part of the actual image that you're trying to work with. So now we're going to upload the higher resolution image. And you can see that it's already a larger image in the preview window. And on this one I'm going to choose complex as well just to keep apples to apples here on the import process. And I could probably choose simple image and it would work well as uh, just as well. And when I import I go to the preview screen you see this is a much larger image than what we had before. And you see it has much cleaner edges around it. And in general most cases you can just simply choose the defaults, use the magic wand, leave everything defaulted, and remove that background. And when I move to the cut screen, if I uncheck this box, I can see a preview of my cut lines. It's going to be nice and clean. Uh, a lot of people like you. You're supposed to be able to remove this, and uh, I would only this would only cut a silhouette out. But uh, in a lot of cases, especially if you're working with a lower resolution image, this can actually make the cut more jagged around the edges than what it should be for some reason. And so I always leave that checked, and then on my uh, canvas when I'm um, after I've inserted the image, I change it to a cut from a print file, and it seems to cut a lot smoother that way. So now here are my two images, and if I zoom in, you'll see that one is a lot clearer than the other. Uh, so when you, if you were to cut this image on the right out, uh, your blade is probably going to even sound like it's kind of grinding as it cuts because it's going to cut around all these little jagged edges. So that's why it's important to have a fairly high resolution image when you import, but not too high of a resolution image. Or, uh, like I said, you could result in those flash plug-in errors. So a good uh, image size to look for is probably anywhere from about 500 by 500 to 1500 by 1500 on the average, and those seem to work well from all the tests that I've performed. If you're interested in my support services or consulting services, please visit my website at www.troyyoung.com for most current pricing information. Additionally, you can go to patreon.com slash troyyoung to help support my channel. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.